balance my time. Mr. Inglis of South Carolina, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, the uh, gentleman just before me is speaking about the public option, and I, like him, am happy that uh, the Senate um, Finance Committee has uh, turned down the public option. Um, but I don't think the snake is dead yet here on the House floor um, because uh, it seems that the Speaker is uh, working over the CBO numbers and trying to persuade some folks that there's some $85 billion worth of savings if we just set the reimbursement rate at 5% above Medicare. Well, let's think that through. Here's what we've got. We've already got two public programs that under-reimburse providers. In fact, for hospitalizations, Medicaid, which is a federal and a state program, reimburses it typically 87% of actual cost for hospitalizations. Medicare reimburses at 92% of actual cost. So if you go 5% higher than Medicare, if I'm doing the math right, it means that the, uh, maybe the uh, new public option would reimburse maybe 93, 94% of actual cost, which means that you've got a 13% cost shift in Medicaid, a 7% cost shift in Medicare, and now if a public option comes to be, a 6% or so cost shift there. The result is that private payers have to pay 129% of actual cost on average when they go into hospital. Now, that's a problem because there's 129 percent of actual cost, it means that premiums go up. And so the public option, far from solving the problem of cost shift, actually is going to add to the problem of cost shift by giving us a third federal program that adds to the problem. So it's clear that this is not a solution and the $85 billion worth of savings is not a real savings. It's a savings only if you can go pull money out of the pocket of anybody who walks into the hospital with an insurance card in the pocket. Because again, they pay 129% of actual cost. So somehow what we have to do here in this healthcare reform business is figure out how to stop that cost shift, how to be accountable here at the federal government so that we're not paying just 87% of actual cost for Medicaid patients, not just paying 92% of actual cost for Medicare patients, and surely not creating a third program that will under reimburse hospitals. So our challenge, the challenge before us is to figure out how to stop the cost shift and how to be accountable from here in Washington, from our state capitals, and surely not to create a public option that just adds to the problem. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield back. Gentleman yields back his time. Mr. Duncan of Tennessee.